Hello basketball coaches and basketball players, my name is Alan from Alice Basketball Training and today I'm going to talk to you and show you the different play sets that you're going to hear about and use as a basketball coach and basketball player. What I'm going to show you in this video is obviously those basketball sets, but also one to two simple basketball plays off of those sets. So let's get down to the clipboard and let's check these out. Okay, so this first set is called the Horns Offense. What you're going to see here is the point guard up top. You're going to see a forward as well as a guard down near the baseline. And you're going to see the power forward and the center, basically the two biggest players, at the elbows. Basically, what you generally see in this offense is to try and create mismatches with guards and centers. You can also create quick hitters where something like a player 5 would set a screen for player 4 and player forward then cut towards the basket or out to that elbow for a quick mid-range shot or for a quick layup down low. Now the idea for this layup down low is for the defensive player to come down to help out and for player 4 now to kick out to player 2 as a backup option. Another type of play that you would see quite often off of the Horns offense is a screen and roll with player 5 and player 4 setting a screen down low for player 2. Player 1 would then use that screen, player 5 would roll off going towards the basketball net, and player 2 would be then popping up top. So that player 1 has multiple different options. He has player 5 rolling towards the basket, he has player 2 up top, and if player 1 was to pass it down low to player 5, player 3's defensive player, he might come down, play help defense, and player 5 would then be able to kick the ball out to either player 4 or player 3 for a 3 point shot. Now these are great set plays that you can run generally at any age group. I have seen the Horns offense personally being ran from the basically the grade 7 which is the roughly the 12 year old range and higher. Generally speaking I would be running this offense at the high school age and running just quick simple hitters that you would be able to run near the middle maybe near halftime or near the end of the game this next offensive set is going to be the five out offense which is going to lead us into the motion sets basically what the motion offense is is your you basically have certain areas of the court where players have to be and then if there's no player in that spot somebody needs to fill that spot Another, re another way that you can call the motion offense a motion offense is you're essentially going through the same motions over and over and over again, allowing, if it's a good coach, allowing for reading the defense so that if a player on defense is not defending a certain player, that certain player is able to now cut towards the rim. However, not all coaches run the motion offense like that. So let's get down to the clipboard and I'll show you the five out. I'll show you a simple play, the set play that's off of that and a motion play that you can run with the five out. So a five out offense is exactly what it's named. There's five players outside of the three point line. Now, what you're going to be seeing is essentially there's five spots on the court. If, for example, player three is down here, that spot's open, so he needs to go and fill that spot. As an example, a easy set play that you can run off of this is one where we can have player five setting a screen down for player four. Player one would then do a dribble handoff, which is basically a screen while handing off the ball. Player 4 would then be cutting towards the rim. Player 2 would be able to have the decision for a 3-point shot or to pass the player 2 for a layup. Now there's three basic motion offenses that you can run off of the 5 out. There's pass and cut, pass and screen away, and pass and screen 4. What basically that means is, let's say player 1 passes to player 2, he has three decisions. He can screen 4, he can cut towards the rim, or he can screen away. From there, he has a couple of different options, but if he cuts towards the rim, player 4 needs to fill that spot up top, player 5 needs to fill player 4's spot, and player 1 needs to fill player 5's spot. Going from there, let's say you're screening away, player 2 passes to player 4, player 2 screens away from where he passed to, player 3 is going to then fill that spot 
or depending on what the defense is giving him, he could even drive to or cut towards the rim. Now, if he cuts towards the rim, what we need to see now is one of a few things. It comes down to what the coach personally likes. Player 2 can pop up top and player 3 can fill around. Unless player 3 obviously scores, in which case then you're all set. Or player 3 can then pop back out like a V-cut, so it would be like this, and he may be open for a 3-point shot. Or what could also happen is player 4 could dribble over to fill that spot, and these players could then fill out. There's also pass and screen 4, which basically means if player 4 was to pass to player 5, he's going to screen 4. Player 5 is going to use that screen. Player 4 is going to roll off towards the rim. He could be hit up for a layup. If not, player 1 is going to fill that spot. 3 is going to fill 1 spot. And 4 is going to fill 3 spot. Now, a lot of coaches use the 5-out offense. If you're just starting to coach a team, if it's a really young team, you want to teach them how to spread out. Or if you're running a, just a quick, like an all-star game kind of hit where you got one or two games with this team and you just want to have something quick and easy to run, most players understand what the five-out offense is and you can just say, five out, you're calling the shots. And it's a lot easier that way. While a lot of coaches will also use the five out if you have no shot clock and you have maybe a minute left in the game and you're up by four, some players and coaches will run the five out. Now our next play is going to be the four out and I'm going to explain how the motion offense works there as well as some set plays as well. So a simple set play for a four out one in offense is some quick, simple, easy screen and roll plays. However, what the four out is, is when you have four players on the outside of the three point line, generally speaking for shorter players, and then you have your massive player. So if you've got a team where you're full of guards, and you've got a team that only has one or two centers on the entire team, you might want to run the four out. Now, a simple play that you can run with the four out, you could say four out high, which means that player five goes into the high post. We can now have him being the screener. So we can have player one using player five as a screener. Player one is going to drive towards the rim. And then he can kick out to player two, who may be floating a bit down. Player 5, who is going to be popping up if player 1 drives. And then, that's a quick, simple set play that you can run. Now, going into the motion. Same rules apply as the 5 out. There's pass and screen 4, pass and cut, and pass and screen away. So from there, what we're going to have is, let's say we pass and cut. If we're cutting, player 5 is going to come up and screen. Player 1 is going to drive towards the rim and he may be open for a layup. If he is not, what's going to happen is he will continue out. Player 3 will then fill player 1 spot. 4 will fill 3 spot and 1 will fill out. If player 2 passes to player 3 and we have player 2 setting a screen for player 3. This is screen 4. We're going to have a staggered screen for player 3. Player 2 is going to roll down the center of the key. And now player 3, he can either take that shot, he can drive towards the rim, or he can pass to player 2 or 5, who will be popping out towards the 3-point line. Now you're probably saying, why is he popping out towards the 3-point line? Well, when you're passing and screening 4, that's going to be turning that player who's passing into the post player now. And then, from there, he's going to be setting up in the post, and player 3, if he doesn't have any options, he's going to dribble out. Now, if you're in the corner, and he passes away, he needs to go and screen away. Now, instead of screening away all the way over to player 1, we want him just to screen down for player 2, and player 2 will pop up. Now, I hope that, may, that makes some kind of sense. I hope these, this video is helping you so far and helping you be able to choose a play that you will feel will work with your team. Now, this next play is going to be the three out, two in. It also has a motion set as well. And it also turns into the overload offense if you're playing against a zone defense. So let's get down to the clipboard and let me show you what I mean. So we have the three out, two in. Three players outside of the three-point line and two players in the low blocks. Quite literally, three, two. Now, 
what we're going to have here is we can set up into the overload offense. So if we're playing against a 2-3 zone, this is just an example. We can have player two pass over, or sorry, player one pass over to player two, player one can cut down, and we're going to have player four pop up towards the high post. This is now having player one over towards player two, player three is over there, player five is over there, player four is going to be cutting off any lob passes, and player two, he's going to be cutting off any passes that are going around the three-point line, because that's the edge of his zone. So from there, generally speaking, you're going to have a player 4 who is open, or if player 5 red is going in between guarding player 5 and 4, you can really get some nice quick high-low passes going, and that's why the overload is so deadly against the zone defense. And this also works against a 3-2 zone as well. Now, if you were to swing the ball around, so let's say player 2 started dribbling the ball up top, and player 3 got open, he passed over to player 3. What's going to happen is I have player 2, he cuts down, and I usually have player 5 and 4 they usually cross. Some coaches will have them go into the high post when they're swinging and then back down. That's one option, but personally, I just have these players cross and that usually confuses that the low defenders in a zone quite easily. And one of the ways you can beat a zone defense is by swinging the ball around the perimeter, which is why if you can pass the ball quick enough you usually have a player two who is open or whether or not you have player three or two open, you may have and probably will have one of these post players open when the ball is swinging around. And then if they make a mistake and player three comes up too high to guard player five or the other way around where player three comes too far to guard player four, then we have player one who's open on this end of the or this side of the court for a quick kick out for a three or he could be driving towards the rim and he could be open for a layup. So there's many mistakes that can happen when you're swinging the ball around the key. Now this next play is called the triangle offense. Phil Jackson and many other coaches have used this offense to absolutely destroy the NBA and kill many teams in the NBA. If you have a player who is like Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant, a wing player who can play like those two players, you definitely need to run this offense. This is my favorite offense. I generally use what I call the triangle motion every single season that I've coached. Now, let's get down to the clipboard and let me show you this basketball play. So we have four players on the outside to start and one player in the post. So you're probably wondering, oh, this is just a four out. It's not. So we're going to have player one pass over to player two, and he's going to cut down towards that low corner. This is creating the triangle offense. From there, sometimes he's open to take that shot right away. But what you're hoping for is some kind of a set play where you could have possibly player five setting a screen and roll for player two. Now you've seen, we've all seen Shaq and Kobe run that play quite a bit where Kobe Bryant can hit that mid-range or pass down to Shaq for a massive slam. However, what's underrated around this play as well is we usually see a screen down for player three as well as a backup option for a three-point shot. Now there's a crazy statistic about the triangle offense where you can have up to 10 thousand different scoring opportunities every single second the ball is being passed around. So that's something to keep in mind. With the triangle offense, you need to be consistently screening away, screening for, or passing the ball. That ball cannot stay in your hands for more than one or two seconds. Somebody needs to get rid of that ball. You need a dri dribble drive, have somebody screen for you and drive or something. It cannot stay still. Now let me show you really quickly what my triangle motion offense looks like. So we're gonna have player two receive the ball from player one, player one goes down into the low post. If there's no options down there, what we're gonna have is player three screening down for player four who's gonna receive the pass back from player two. Player four is gonna receive that ball and then player three is gonna be popping out and player four is going to be passing the ball over to player three. Player four is going to go down into this low corner and all at the same time, 
we're going to be having player five setting a screen for the taller of one of those two players. So let's say player two is taller, he's going to be going down into the low post. We're now having an opportunity for a three over here. We're now having an opportunity for a layup here, a three point shot here. We're now also having at the same time, let's say we pass down to player two. We now have player five who needs to get outside of the key, so he's going to be setting a screen for player one who's going up towards the point. This could be another pass up top for a three point shot, or at the same time as that's happening, we can also have player three screening down for player four. But whatever happens, let's say player four gets that ball again, we can reverse that ball. We can have player one pass over to player five, cut down, taller player, player two screens for, he goes down. This time we're going to have player two setting a screen for player three to pop up top. If there's nothing happening over there, you can keep on reversing the ball around. This works really well against a zone defense. So I hope that that motion offense helps your team win a lot of games. Now next, we're going to be running the high and low 1-4 offense. Let's get down to the clipboard let me show you what I mean. So with this, we have one player up top, four players along the baseline. This is a type of play that you're generally going to see near the end of the game in the NBA or even in international basketball. This is a very well used play. So you're generally going to see something like player 5 coming up top, setting a screen for player 1. Player 4 is going to be setting a screen for player 2, who's going to be popping. And player 1 is going to be either driving towards the rim, possibly trying to get a help defender down from player 3 for a shot, or he could go in for the shot himself, kick the ball out, take the 3 point shot, or drive, see player 2 open, kick it out to player 2. There's many different options that can come from that play. However, this is a great isolation play, end of game type play, anything like that, this is a fantastic play to run. And whatever plays you run with the low 1-4 offense, you can run also with the high 1-4 offense, and this is what the high 1-4 looks like. Basically, the high 1-4 looks exactly the same as the low 1-4, except instead of the players being along the baseline, instead, they are along the free throw line extended. So pretty simple, pretty easy. This next play is going to be a 1-3-1. One, one. And generally speaking, this is a fantastic play to run against a zone defense. As we all know, 1-3-1, one, one, one player there, three players along the free throw line extended, and one player down in the low post. From there, you can set some pretty simple screen Basketball plays where you could have player four screen for player one. He could drive towards the rim, hope for some help defense to kick it down to player one. That is one option. This also leads into a great overload offense if you're playing against a zone. You can also have player one pass into player four, have player one screen over for let's say it's a 3-2 zone that they're running. Screen over for player three. Player three could get open for a shot. There's many different opportunities with this type of offense but it is kind of rare at the younger age group so i hope that these plays help your team win more games i also hope that this video and this, these explanations help your team win more games if they do let us know in the comment section below i would love to hear from you and i will see you guys again later on today for the second video of the day